Hey guys, welcome today. I'm a student from Canada actually. I'm a, uh, I just graduated from engineering recently. And I'm here to present one of my fourth year design projects. Uh, so I've been working on this for about a year now. Uh, and I'm here to talk to you guys about it. So there are a lot of us in the room today who are wearing these little glasses. And we do that because we have poor vision. Now at some point, whether you are wearing one of these or not, you must have gone to an optometrist to see uh, whether you have poor vision uh, and to correct that vision. So in our world, these services are readily available and they're accessible and at a relatively low cost. But what about developing countries? So this slide here just shows some of the numbers um, came out from World Health Organization. Um, so they show that basically 153 million people in the world just need glasses in order to prevent blindness and event, uh, in order to uh, give them a better life. So this is a really a big problem that we're trying to solve through our solution that we've built. So what is our solution? I'm just going to output to the camera. And so this tiny little point and shoot camera is basically our solution to this problem. What we have here is just a simple touch screen in the back and there's a Raspberry Pi hooked up to it. And in the front, we have this triangle array of infrared LEDs. And essentially, what we're doing is shining light into a person's eye, and depending on what kind of air they have, so whether they're nearsighted, farsighted, uh, and how much, uh, that's what we output back onto the screen in the back. So this is essentially a $50 portable vision screener, and we're building this basically for third world eye camps. So I'm gonna play, switch back to my computer and play a little video here of how it works. Um, unfortunately, I can't turn this device on right here because it's not quite safe yet. So in this video, the right beneath the monitor, you see an artificial eye. So this is what we've been testing on. And right now, the artificial eye can go from we can range it from plus three power to minus five. So that's basically what your eye is on the model right here. And right now the infrared is on. And you see as soon as it, the infrared LED goes on. So this is now infrared LED is on. So right now you'll see crescent in the, in the artificial eye at the bottom, which indicates that this person has myopia, which means they have a negative power of minus three. Now the hand there is just going to switch uh, myopia to hyperopia, which is a positive power. Just momentarily. So here we can see that the eye is plus five now, which indicates that this person has my uh, hyperopia and therefore is farsighted. So from the image or from the video, you can see that this is all done through this little $50 tool here. So I want to go through some of the current offerings that we have on the market to detect uh, poor vision and give you an approximate prescription. So from left to right, we have the first is the retinoscope. This thing costs $10,000 with all its little funny add-ons. And you need an ophthalmologist or trained optometrist to check what power you have. The second one is an auto refractor. So this is basically built for little kids uh, and it's like an automated device you place in front of them and it gives you an approximate prescription of their eyes. Again, this cost $8,000. The next over we have Pediavision, which is one of, one of the more recent developments in eye care. It's, like a, it's slightly bigger than what we have here. It's a more of an SLR unit. But again, it gives you an accurate prescription uh, around, and it costs around $8,000. The last one is the latest development built by MIT and it's called a Nitro device. So Nitra is basically a $3 little add-on that you can stick in front of your mobile phone. And when you, basically you have to get the user to look into this Nitra device, get them to input a whole bunch of things, and it figures out their approximate prescription. So with all these tools, you can see that either they're too expensive, the auto refractor is too bulky, MIT Nitra needs user inputs. And so combining all of these um, deficiencies, we've built this one tiny little $50 device that overcomes all these problems. 
So what were some of our goals? So researching current competitors, our goal was to keep it under $300 per unit. Now, just one prototype cost is 150. However, if we mass manufacture it, our prototype cost can come down to $50 a unit. There's no training required. Anyone can use this device. Just use, all you have to do is just point it at a set of eyes, and it will tell you the approximate prescription. What is the accuracy of the device? So right now, we can, using this device and the software we've written thus far, we can detect with 90% accuracy whether you're nearsighted, whether you're farsighted, and approximately how much. So with this device, basically what you have is a vision screener that can tell you your approximate prescription, your first value of your uh, prescription, which is the cylindrical value. And it can do that with 90% accuracy. And the next steps that we're going to be working on is basically turning this device uh, into safe enough. So you'll see that it has a bunch of it has a bunch of infrared LEDs uh, which have to be safe, which have to be approved for safety before this can actually be used on a human being. Uh, the reason being, uh, if you input too much infrared radiation into your eyes, it can burn your retina. So we don't want to do that. <laughs> So that's why this device is not turned on right here. Uh, the team has also partnered up with a bunch of uh, organizations. We are based in Canada, so we've partnered up with Toronto Calcutta Foundation uh, that is willing to field test these devices for us in November. And we're also partnering with Urban Eye Foundation, which is the biggest uh, eye care in India. So I just want to show you a little uh, image, static image here. So this is what you actually get out of the camera after it's processed through our software. So in here you can see a clear crescent for hyperopia, which means that, sorry about that. So here, this is an image uh, for hyperopia uh, and myopia. This is what, this is exactly what comes out of this $50 unit right here. And that's it, nice and short. Questions? Comments? Yeah. Sorry, sorry. The device is basically, uh, it's about a meter away. There's no, like, the person using it doesn't have to test how far it is. Um, and all you just need to do is just relatively align it with your eyes. Because the software we've built uh, basically corrects for the axes and the tilt. Any, any more questions? Right, so the question was how close it, it can approximate your prescription. Um, this device we've built so far is basically 90% accurate in telling you whether you have hyperopia and myopia. Um, it can also tell you um, your cylindrical value within a 0.5 diopter. So cylindrical value is the first value of prescription. You need a spherical value and an axis value. Uh, so those two can only be found, unfortunately, after doing field testing because you need the data to write your own software for. So one of the questions was, why are you using infrared LEDs and not just simple LEDs? Um, so the reason for that is, if you use, so infrared LEDs, your eyes do not accommodate. So that means your pupil size that we're trying to take a picture of will not constrict. So uh, we can do that. So the person has to sit in a dark room and just point this. If you use normal LEDs uh, at the visible wavelength, the, per the pupil will constrict. and that means that we cannot get these crescents. Um, you won't be able to see the crescents if you use visible wavelengths. Does that answer your question? Yeah. All right. So um, the instrument here basically uses eccentric photorefraction. So the principles are the exact same, except, so
some of the current offerings we have on the market either cost too much. So the retinal scope is about ten thousand dollars. Next one is an auto refractor, which is very bulky. Uh, so the market we're trying to hit with this is basically third world eye camps. So they need to be portable, they need to be accessible, um, they need to be built with common tools that anyone can use without training. And so this is what the device overcomes. Any more questions? No, so with this, uh, with this camera, you don't need to dilate your pupils. A lot of the, so that's another disadvantage. Uh, so the second one from the left, that's an auto refractor and the retinal scope as well. Both of them, you need to dilate. Uh, the optometrist or ophthalmologist have to dilate your eye using cyclotegia. Um, or, yeah. So one of the reasons was why you need a triangle. Um, the idea is to basically, uh, so the closer the LED is to the camera, the more light it shines in. So if you're about, if I'm doing this from a meter away, uh, I need the basically to create a single line of path. So the intensities, as it, so basically as the intent, uh, the distance away from the camera increases. The more, the less light goes in. So therefore, we need a triangular pattern. Any more questions? All right. Thank you guys for coming.